So beginning to find a comfortable seated position, as always, knees could be on the floor, you could be seated cross-legged or perhaps even kneeling <clears throat> with some support under the hips. And as it's a morning practice, if you're practicing this at a later time in the day on the recording, just becoming aware of your knees level with or a little lower than your hips and your hip bones to find and create some space here for the belly to expand. Having your belt, your strap, your scarf, whatever prop you have to use nearby. Perhaps taking a couple of rolls of your shoulders, feeling length, space through your heart center for your breath. Noticing if your chin is jutting out a little or up towards the sky, perhaps you drop it a centimeter or two, lengthening through the back of your neck. And if it feels comfortable, closing your eyes. And beginning to tune into your breath. If it feels possible this morning, breathing in and out through your nose. Maybe beginning to notice where your breath is moving to. And to sense your breath is a little higher in your chest, you might like to bring your hand to the lowest part of your ribcage. Little fingers resting on the top of your belly or abdomen area. And using your hands, palms in contact, the lowest part of your ribs to guide your breath into the lower lobes of your lungs. Maybe a sensation of as you breathe in, your, move, your breath moving downwards, down as far as it can travel. If you are using the help of your hands to guide your breath, when you're ready, allow your hands, your arms to rest. And taking hold of your belt or strap or prop, slowly finding it in both hands and wrapping it around the back of your body. In practice something called strap breath, really useful to feel into the back of the lungs. So whatever prop you're using, having it lightly in your hands, elbows tucked in, I've got a tendency to grip. So maybe if that's you as well, softness in the hands a felt sense of connection between the prop you're using and the back of your ribcage. Shoulders soft, perhaps even allowing your tongue to rest in the lower part of your mouth. And breathing into your belt. Similarly to the hands or the palms on our body, guiding our breath. I know the majority of our breath moves into the back of the lungs. 
So maybe this helps you to feel that sensation. Perhaps it encourages a slightly longer or deeper breath. Becoming aware of shoulders and arms and hands, just encouraging a softness and ease. And resting your arms at any point. And maintaining a length in the trunk and spine. And then you may like to cross your strap or belt over, so it's crossing at the front of your body. Feeling into here the 360 degree movement of your ribcage as you breathe in. Noticing your belt or strap prop you're using, moving with your breath. beginning to encourage a full diaphragmatic breath supporting our mind and our body Eventually letting your belt or strap go, popping it out the way down to one side. And taking a few breaths here without the aid of a prop. Noticing if you can replicate, mirror, outward and upward movement of your ribcage. And you may find it's more noticeable. Breathing in. Encouraging your breath to the lowest lobes of your lungs. If your eyes are closed, you may like to begin to gently tuck your chin, opening your eyes when you're ready. Slowly raising your head, we're going to find our way into a tabletop shape. <clears throat> Hands roughly under shoulders, knees roughly under hips, and beginning to take a swaying motion, feeling into your hips. You might like to take some hip circles. Releasing through hip, sacrum, pelvis. And 
And if you get to a point where it feels lovely, just to release, taking a few breaths there. And if at any point wrists are getting tired, taking a soft fist or perhaps rolling the end of your mat up and placing a little bit of height under your fingertips, taking a little bit of weight out of the wrists. You might like to begin to move your shoulders, rolling up and down, almost as if your shoulder blades are rising and falling. Finding stillness and beginning to extend your right leg out, toes grounded, perhaps even coming down to elbows to give your wrists a break. Finding a sensation in your calf muscles, perhaps the hamstrings a little as well, just creating a little bit of length. Right knee coming back down towards the mat and left leg beginning to extend out. In your own time, encouraging your left knee back to center. Perhaps find your hands coming back into contact with the floor if you drop down to elbows. We'll come through a few rounds of cat and cow. So gently dropping the belly towards the mat, taking your gaze forwards and slowly rounding your back, spine reaching up towards the sky. Rippling effect of your spine. And perhaps the movement begins at the base of the spine, the tailbone. So that's a starting point if it feels possible for you. Movement traveling up the back of the body, head moving last. And if you'd like to begin to in integrate your breath. Breathing in as you gaze forwards, dropping into cow. Breathing out as you roll your spine up into cat. Working here with your own rhythm. Softness in your elbows, ease in the shoulders. And when you're ready, beginning to find stillness. Slowly stepping our right foot forward, so we can come into Anjanyasana, our lunge. If you feel you want a slightly stronger sensation across the hips, you could tuck your left toes, take your left knee back a little further. Welcome to stay here, grounded, and maybe hands coming to hips, or perhaps you begin to reach up towards the sky. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gaze could follow, being mindful of your necks, particularly if this is a morning practice. Maybe your gaze is softly forwards. Beginning to warm the body up. Overnight our bodies tend to get a little tighter as they rest, muscles contract. So easing into morning movement. Exhaling, gently finding your hands back towards the mat. And we're coming into a twist, the left hand planting down towards the floor, parallel with the right foot. You could take a soft fist, offering a little bit more height, or even have a block under your hands. Turning towards your right hand side, and to begin with, finding the right hand in contact with the right hip, encouraging your right shoulder back. Maybe from here, the right hand begins to float up into full twist.
on an exhalation journey, finding your way back through. We're going to come into dragon or lizard. Right foot, heel toeing towards the right hand side of your mat. Hands coming through centre. And this is where, again, you might like to bring block or book something of height as you ease into your right hip, inner thighs, hip flexors. Really welcome to walk your hands forwards. So perhaps you begin to travel a little deeper, even dropping into elbows, if that feels good for you here. Thinking of stira and sukha, steadiness and ease. So if you feel you have gone a little too deep, just edging off, focusing on your breath, breathing in, Coming back to the movement of your ribcage in 360 degrees. I'm taking four more breaths here. And when you're ready, beginning to gently ease out, heel toe the right foot back to centre. And then you may like to rock backwards and forwards, just easing out of the shape we held for a little longer. Eventually finding either an extended child or a downward facing dog. So you could find the knees wide apart, hands reaching forwards, or perhaps you begin to find a downward dog exploring movement if you're coming into downward dog so perhaps your feet walk wide gently pedaling your feet beginning to find your knees grounding once again as we move to the other side of that short sequence, left foot coming forwards into a lunge. Mindful if you'd like, stronger sensation, taking the right knee back a little further, perhaps even offering some support, some extra padding for your knee. And then maybe you begin to rise up. Hands coming to hips, feeling into the shape. And then on an inhalation, if you would like to, reaching up towards the sky, this time around, perhaps the hands come into a cactus shape, offering to find or create an expansion in the upper body. Exhaling, beginning to float forwards. We're coming to a twist on this side. So right hand is grounding parallel with the left. Perhaps you take a soft fist. As you turn towards your left hand side, left hand on your left hip. Encouraging your left shoulder back a little. And then beginning to perhaps raise your left hand. Palm facing away. Exhaling as you begin to rotate through centre, we're coming into dragon on the other side. Left foot beginning to heel toe towards the left hand side so the hands can come through centre. Using any props that feel helpful, maybe you're bringing the floor to you and easing into a slightly deeper hip stretch. Welcome to walk your hands forwards, perhaps even dropping into elbows if that feels good. Once again, finding that steadiness and ease, a sense of steadiness in the shape, ease in the breath with a sensation of a stretch.
three more breaths here. Directing your breath to any tightness. You can feel any tension that's softening. And in your own time, finding your way back through centre. And as you ease out, you might like to take the rebound, a very soft movement. Easing out of the shape. Eventually finding downward facing dog or perhaps extended child. And perhaps you begin to invite movement again, exploring your body, feeling into shoulders, legs. Eventually walking your way into a forward fold any way that feels possible if you're in child gently finding your way up Feet about hip distance apart this morning if that feels okay for you softness in your head and your neck You may even like to take hold of opposite elbows come into the yin yoga shape of dangling Bending your knees as much as you feel you need to Offering support for the hamstrings. So if they're feeling quite tight this morning, finding a balance, slight bend as they slowly lengthen. Hands coming to shins, very slowly beginning to find your way up to standing, up to mountain. Hands soft, shoulders soft. Finding the top of your mat as we begin to find a little bit of a flow. And as you find your mountain here, you might like to explore it, rocking your feet or Transferring the weight of your feet from your toes to your heels and perhaps to the outside edges of your feet. Eventually finding a center point. On an inhalation, beginning to raise the arms. Perhaps your gaze moves upwards. Exhaling, leading with the heart. Inhaling flat back lift, perhaps the hands come to the shin so you can feel the expansion of your rib cage in all directions. And as you exhale, beginning to float forwards into Uttanasana once again. Bending into the knees, we're going to set the right foot back into warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. So right foot begins to plant down, toes pointing out the side a little, rising up, left knee above left ankle as you rise up, strength through the thighs. Encouraging your right hip forwards, left hip back. An encouragement rather than a force. Perhaps your feet are hip distance apart. And then maybe you begin to rise up. You might like to sit your hand a little further back. Even the gaze, if that feels okay for your neck at this point. Deepening the back bend. Noticing your jaw, tongue resting. Exhaling, gently releasing your hands, taking a clasp of the hands behind the back or opposite wrists, reaching away, heart lifting. And then beginning to fold forwards and maybe you hover a little here or perhaps you come into a bit of a twist, left shoulder coming to left knee. Humble warrior. Feeling the strength of this shape, your inner strength. Perhaps even lifting your toes, engaging feet and calf muscles. Breathing. On an inhalation, slowly beginning to rise up, finding the strength in your legs, releasing the hands, reaching up, 
and folding forwards, hands are coming back towards the mat, we're finding a plank, either on knees or toes, hands roughly under shoulders, thinking about the weight of your body across the thumb and little fingers, trying to encourage it to be even, navel towards spine. If you're on toes, perhaps you begin to rock forwards a little, looking the, over the edge of your mat. Exhaling, gently dropping down to knees, chest, chin. Inhaling, Bhujangasana, Cobra. Elbows hugging ribcage, just making sure they're not flaring out. Softness there. And it might be a very gentle Cobra, very gentle backbender. Perhaps you find you're rising a little higher. And if that is you, an inner grip of the thigh. So imagining you have something between your thighs you're holding on to, to protect the sacrum area. Exhaling as you slowly lower yourself down. Inhaling, downward facing dog or maybe extended child. You've come into downward dog, just noticing what feels good. Maybe your body's still asking for a bit more movement. Making the downward dog fit you, your shape, your body, rather than the other way around. Is there a gentle tuck of the chin to lengthen through the back of the neck? Two more breaths here, finding a weight balance even through the hands from the thumb to the little fingers. Maybe you drop to your knees and step your right foot forwards or perhaps you come through three-legged dog reaching up towards the sky with the right foot and swinging it to the front of your mat. Left foot follows into forward fold. And we're going to find some inner strength once again, gently bending to the knees, sitting down into what is almost Utkatasana chair. Hands could come to shoulder height here, perhaps a little higher if that feels okay. Inner grip of the thighs again, protecting knees. And on an inhalation, using the strength of your legs to rise up, exhaling, floating your arms back down. We'll take the sequence, the flow on the other side. You may like to reset your feet, whether they're hip distance or together, beginning to spread the toes, feel into grounding through the soles of your feet. On an inhalation, perhaps you take the hands out to the sides of the body, opening through the shoulders, exhaling, floating down. Inhaling, flat back or halfway lift. Exhaling, floating down. Stepping into warrior one on the other side, left foot begins to step back. Rising up, Havira Vadrasana, finding our strength in our legs. Perhaps you adjust a little, feet hip distance or longer stance. Hands could rest on hips or maybe you begin to reach up again towards the sky. Welcome to take this a little deeper if that feels okay for you. Softening through the jaw. Warrior sequences, Virabhadrasana 1, 2 and 3, evoking our inner strength, our inner resolve. Exhaling, gently allowing the hands to reach behind, either a clasp or an opposite wrist. As they slowly reach away, heart centre lifting. And then perhaps you begin to fold forwards. Welcome to hover here. Or maybe your right shoulder finds your right knee. Take a moment to relax, soften into the neck, the head. Inhaling as you begin to rise up, releasing hands, 
Breathing in, arms reaching up towards the sky. Breathing out, folding forwards, finding your plank, your version. Perhaps that's on knees, maybe it's on toes. A sense of strength through the arms, so great weight bearing shape, building bone density, but to find your inner strength again. Navel towards spine just a little, particularly if you're on your toes, protecting your lumbar spine. Exhaling, gently dropping down to knees, chest and chin, inhaling cobra. Welcome to make it small. If you're coming a little deeper, finding a deeper shape, sacroiliac joint, thinking around inner thigh grip. Exhaling as you float back down towards your mat. Inhaling, downward facing dog or extended child. And if you're coming into down dog, maybe you're exploring movement again. Perhaps your body's ready for stillness. A sense of navel moving towards your thighs. Softness in the knees, always a micro bend in the knees. So we're not locking any joints. Perhaps a gentle tuck of your chin. Maybe you gently push into your hands a little further finding a little bit more length in the back of your body. Noticing again the 360 breath, breathing in, noticing the ribcage expand upwards and outwards. Maybe you drop down to your knees here and step your left foot forwards or come into three-legged dog. Left foot sweeping through to the front of the mat. Right foot follows, and we're back into our Uttanasana, our forward fold. Beginning to bend into the knees, so we're sitting almost in a chair, sitting into chair, Utkatasana. Hands perhaps coming to thighs. In a thigh grip again, so imagining we have a yoga block or brick between the thighs, we're gripping. Maybe the arms come to shoulder height or a little higher. Beginning to rise up, powering through the feet as you reach up towards the sky. Exhaling, hands, palms turning away and floating down. Taking a moment here into Dasana. Feeling into the grounding through the soles of your feet. Softness in your shoulders. Is it possible to encourage your tongue to rest in the lower part of your mouth? Maybe your eyes are closed. Noticing the connection with your mat, with the earth beneath you, in Tadasana, in mountain. Perhaps you visualize the strength, power of a mountain. crown of your head growing towards the sky. Maybe focusing on your breath, finding inner stillness here for a moment or two. And when you're ready, as quietly as you can, coming back down towards the mat. You might like to draw your knees in for a hug. Perhaps even take some circular movements with your knees. And eventually finding a shape for relaxation. That might be semi-supine, perhaps it is traditional shavasana. Maybe it's curled up on one side, ensuring you feel supported and comfortable for rest.
as you begin to find stillness, find comfort, ensuring you're warm. Is it possible to give yourself permission to melt, to soften a little more? And allowing yourself to be held by your mat and the earth beneath you. Maybe there's a little more softening around your glutes, hips area, where we often hold tension and tightness. Shoulders. We're able to drop a little further. Noticing your jaw, tongue, resting. And finding some focus with your breath. An opportunity to encourage your mind to find rest as well. Following your breath in and out. Taking this time to rest and restore. Taking your time to slowly awaken your body, maybe inviting movement to your hands and your feet. Perhaps some deeper breaths, awakening your lungs. Maybe taking a full stretch with your arms overhead or a knee hug. Any movement that feels supportive at this point. And when you're ready, rolling over onto one side, taking a few breaths there. Maybe supporting your head with your arm or your hand. 
Mm. Perhaps if your eyes are closed, they remain closed as you slowly find your way up to a seated shape. Using any support that's helpful. Maybe you take your hands across your heart or join them together in Anjali Mudra. Taking a moment to acknowledge any changes in your mind, your body and your breath. Thanking yourself for gifting yourself this time of a yoga practice. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to take my hands to my forehead to remind us of kind thoughts. To my lips for kind words. And to my heart centre for kind actions. Om Shanti.